Hello and welcome back to another episode of Math with Sewn. Today, we're going to be looking at parallel lines cut by a transversal. Let's get into it. So, I got a whole bunch of parallel lines cut by transversals here, and what that means is that these two lines right here, these are the two that are parallel. They are going in the same direction forever and never going to intersect. They would have the same slope if it was graphed on a coordinate plane. And then this other line right here, that is what we call the transversal. All right. Now, based on the parallel line setup, there are a lot of things that actually occur. And we're going to learn about those right now. The first of which is what I call corresponding angles. Okay, corresponding angles, there's a lot of them on here, but that would be these angles right here, these two that I just put dots on, they are going to be considered congruent, and you can kind of see that this would slide down and be equal right here. And if these are equal, let's say that this was 40 degrees, this would have to be 40 degrees, that would not only be an indicator that these would have to be parallel, but it would also be something that if you knew that the lines were parallel, you would know those would both be 40. So those are two corresponding angles, but there's a lot of them. I could have put them over here if I wanted to. If I said this was 40 over here, then this would for be 40 over here, and these two would also be considered corresponding angles. The next one that we're going to deal with is going to be alternate interior angles, which is going to be on the inside here and on the inside, if you think of this as a sandwich, so they're going to be on the inside of that sandwich of parallel lines, and they're on the opposite sides of the transversal. So that is why they are called alternate interior angles. And these are also going to be considered congruent. So these are also congruent. So let's say that this part was 120, 120 degrees, then this part over here would also be 120 degrees. Now there are two sets of alternate interior angles. There's a lot more sets of corresponding angles, so many that I didn't even put them down. But there are only two sets of cor uh, alternate interior angles per thing. Um, and that could be these spots over here as well. Which if I wanted to find those out, I could, because if it's 120 on this part of the line, it's gonna have to be 60 on the other part of the line because that is a linear pair. And then the other star right there would be 60 as well. And these right here would be considered alternate interior angles. The next one we are going to be dealing with is going to be alternate exterior. Oh, I'm just going to rewrite it. Alternate exterior angles. Now alternate exterior angles are exactly what they sound like. They are the, going to be on opposite sides but on the outside of the parallel sandwich. So this is like a sandwich of parallel, like this is the top bread and the bottom bread. The alternate exterior would be on opposite sides of the transversal. So I got one on the left side of the transversal and one on the right side and both of them are on the outside of that sandwich. And they could be whatever angle that we want them to be. Um, let's say this was 110 this would have to be 110. And if that was 110, we would also have the other, corris not corresponding, the other alternate interior angles, exterior angles, that if this is 110, that makes a line. Lines have to be 180, 70, and the other star would have to be 70 as well. Now our last one that we're going to have is actually known by two different names. You can call it same side interior and then some textbooks also call it same um, they call it consecutive interior 
angles. And if you didn't catch on, alternate interior, exterior angles from the previous one is congruent as well. 110, 110, 70, 70. So same side interior or consecutive interior, I like same side interior because they're on the same side of the transversal and they're both on that inside of the parallel sandwich. So these do not equal each other. They're the first one and the only one that we will be talking about that will not be equal to each other. These will have to add to equal 180 degrees. So if this part right here was 60, the top part would have to be 120 for it to add to equal 180 degrees. So for this next one, we're just going to show you a little bit of how this could be applied and why it is even the way it is. So let's say that I said that this top angle is 100. Now without knowing these two lines are parallel, we would be able to fill in 100 degrees for our vertical angle. And we would be able to fill in 80 degrees to make this 180 for that straight line or the 180 and the 100 from below it. And we could fill in the 80 for the other vertical angle. So all that we're doing, once you identify the across vertical and the across vertical and the 180 to make the line, all we're doing is we're taking this and we're duplicating it down here. So the 100 was in the top left corner. It's going to be in the top left corner of this X. And the 80 is going to be right next to it. Bottom left hand corner, vertical of that 80 would be this 80. And bottom right hand corner would be 100. Okay. So another thing I like to do is I like to call them like dumbbells. If you keep the diagonal going the same direction, these are all going to be the same. And that is because those are all the obtuse angles. And then the acute angles are going to be acute here and here and here and here. So how would that apply? Well, here I have a 2x. And here I have a hundred. Now, if you don't see where they are on the transversal, you can extend the transversal a little bit more to make it a little more clear. And it's a little more apparent now that these are on opposite sides of the transversal and the outside. So technically, this is considered alternate exterior angles, which are considered congruent to each other. But if you didn't see that, you could tell that this 100 could be transposed over here because it's a vertical angle. But we could also have slid the 100 down because it's corresponding. And that 100 would really just be equal to 2x. So when you're doing these parallel transversal problems, the ones that involve algebra, you have to figure out, do they add to equal 180 or do they equal each other? And in this case, they equal each other, so 2x would equal 100, divide by 2, x would equal 50. Now for the next example, I'm going to make it just a little bit harder on the algebra, and it might not be an alternate exterior, alternate interior, or anything like that. It could just be random anything. So let's say that I had 100 degrees here, and let's say this was 2x plus 20 and I want to know what X is. That's the main goal. Find out what X is almost every time. So in this case, we don't have a rule that fits into it. They're on opposite sides of the transversal, but one's on the inside, one's on the outside. There's no named thing for that. So what we can do is we can move this 100 over here because they are vertical, and then we can determine where else would the hundreds go perhaps. You might be able to see now that these are same side interior, but if you don't see that, you can put in the 100 in the mirror image spot. So like, remember, whatever is over here would have to be over here. So the 100 was in the top left corner, and now bottom right, top left corner, bottom right. So now it's a little bit easier to see that these two things aren't going to equal each other because they're not vertical angles. So if they're not equal to each other, they're going to have to add to equal 180. So we have 2x plus 20 and 100 have to add 
to equal 180, and that is because they are making a straight line and straight angles and linear pairs add to 180 degrees. Combine like terms, 2x plus 20, 120 equals 180. We need to subtract the 120. If you take away 120 from that 180, you're left with 60. And 60 divided by 2 is 30. Now for the next two examples, we're not going to focus too much on algebra. We're just going to focus on what if the parallel lines look a little different. All right. So what if the parallel lines actually have the transversal that isn't really continued like it is here? And I was only telling you that this part over here was 40 degrees. That's it. That's all I'm giving you. And these two lines are parallel, which is the symbol I'm drawing right now, by the way. It's really just two extra arrows. If this is 40, on the other side of this, we would have 140 so that it would make 180 for that linear pair. Now, if we drew the transversal further, you're allowed to do that. Where else would 40 belong? Well, 40 would belong on this part, and 140 would belong on the other vertical angle there. So now we just have to duplicate this up here, 140 top right corner, top left corner. 40 would be next to it. There's the 140 and 40. They slid up there at the top. Now the 40 here and the 140 there, they have to be at the bottom of this X that we have drawn. So we have 40 and 140. The next next problem, you have to first identify what two lines are parallel. So if they're not stated, in this case, it's these two. Those are two parallel lines, and we actually have two transversals. And if I told you that this part right here was 70, and this part right here was 50, we could actually fill in everything else that we need to know, and we just have to do it individually. So if we cover up one of these transversals, cover up one of them, we just do this one first. And then afterwards, we can cover up the other one, and we can do that one next. So I'm going to cover up the bottom one. We don't need to focus on that. We don't need to focus on that. You don't need it. Fill in the 50 for the vertical angle, and then look at our x. 50 is over here in the top part of the x in the right top-hand corner. 50 would be over here in that right top-hand corner because those are the corresponding angles and then we fill in the vertical angle. Well, if 50 is over here, and 50 is over here, the other side of that line would have to be 130, so that it would add to equal 180, and 130 on the other side, 130, 130 on the other side, so it mimics what we have over here, and it still makes 180. After I've done that, then I can focus on the other line. Notice how these will have nothing to do with this one. Each transversal is its own thing, and it will have its own angles. So this 70, I'm going to fill in vertical. I'm going to fill in 110, because 110 and 70 make that straight line, or this straight line, and 110 here as well. We can fill all of these over here. 70, 110, for here and here, here and here then the vertical, 110, and 70 to mimic what we have here and to establish the vertical angles that were already present. All right, that's going to do it for today's episode. Until next time, stay positive, and I will see everybody later.